Hi, hello, welcome Arjun to this interaction session. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. So, Arjun, how uh, can you please briefly introduce yourself to the team? I am Arjun. Uh, I graduated 12th of 2023 and I wrote my bit set last month. Uh, mm. As of iteration 4, I have uh, secured uh, EN9 in Bits Hyderabad and uh, looking forward to the upcoming iterations. Okay, great. That's great. So, uh, Arjun, in this uh, preparation journey, you would have many experiences where you can share your thoughts. So, mm. we would like to know what is the one thing which you understand is a most common mistake during the preparation journey? I don't know. Um, it's not mistake. Like, there are a lot of uh, small, small things that people, over, I mean, overlook. Like, for example, uh, of course, studying the NCRT, I mean, many people say it and it has become kind of a cliche, but it is true that you have to focus on the NCRT a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so that if in without uh, getting the NCRT straight and just going to competitive part of it and... Uh, Powering through all the you know, shortcuts and stuff, at some point it doesn't uh, help a lot, especially mm -hmm. in uh, chemistry. Where okay. The chemistry and physics, where the conceptual uh, knowledge is important, if uh, the NCRT is not strong, then uh, it will become very much difficult for any competitive exam. So that was one mistake that I made in the initial stage. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, not much. Like, just practice, I mean, more than any uh, reading some book or some theory or learning the formula is just solving hmm. questions and most importantly solving actual papers helps way more than anything else the definitely. more questions i solve the more it uh, helps definitely definitely that is a very important point i completely agree with that arjun hmm. so uh, apart from this arjun what do you think is one aspect which often gets overlooked during the preparation part Mm, mm. again coming back to the same thing that I said in the pre for the previous question mm -hmm. you have to solve more questions the more questions you solve and most importantly the more papers you solve like you cannot procrastinate solving papers later like if you can't be like there are I still have a month for the exam I can start solving papers like you know one or, one or two weeks before it that doesn't work because Every day you can't take a new paper because you, mm. once you take a paper, you can see what concepts you are missing out and take one day to learn that stuff and try it again. So it's better to start solving papers from like a month before the test. The more papers you solve, the more it helps towards cracking that exam, whichever one uh, you're preparing for. Great. So That's... That's very nice advice. Uh, Arjun, now when you when you look at your journey, I am pretty sure that all of us start with the aim of like J main, J advanced and work accordingly, right? And mm -hmm. towards, mm -hmm. I would say the latter part of grade 12, we also get inclined towards bits. So which is mm -hmm. quite a, like both things require quite a different strategy. So how they are different and how you were able to cope up through this change from j to bitset again there are multiple entrance exams that come in event j usually is the first entrance exam that anyone writes and it and bitset is usually the last entrance exam that anyone writes because of just how the schedule goes right and mm -hmm. most of the people they have their board exams like in the mid, uh, middle of j1 and j2 something like that so um J two bits there is a huge change because number one the number of people writing the competition is lesser mm -hmm. like nine lakhs or something for J and it's like three lakhs for bits mm -hmm. that is number one so because the competition and number two um, there's just a lot of uh, other nuances that go into the JE, especially the ranking and uh, things like that, because there is normalization in JE due to there being a lot of uh, things like uh, reservation and tougher shifts, easier shifts, and all that, uh, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Right. So it's it becomes very hard as it goes on. Like getting a ninety percentile 
getting from like 70 percentile to a 90 percentile is way 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 more easier than going from a 90 percentile to a 95 percentile which is again way easier than getting from 95 to 99 right there right. is a huge jump because of that and especially again as i said there is a reservation also which happens mm-hmm. in je so mm-hmm. the students who are there in the who have gotten lower percentiles like mm-hmm. below, oh 95 to i mean around 90 to 95 will get the ranks will be comparable to those who got from 97 to 99 hmm. so because so because of the how it gets pushed uh, as it goes on it becomes much 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 more harder for any student for that matter to make the jump from one like uh, nine 5 to 99 than it is from 90 to 95 mm-hmm. but in which said there is no reservation nothing of that sort and the again the most important thing is that which said there is a lot of transparency also that goes on mm-hmm. because apparently because it is uh, only for like one particular college the college itself is organizing that exam and uh, Right. taking care of the entire thing whereas here it's for multiple colleges and josa counseling uh, mm-hmm. takes care of it for both je means and advanced mm-hmm. so because of that there is a, there happens to be a lot of difference and uh, for a bit said there is no normalization between the shifts and everyone is compared by just the marks right the absolute mark is what uh, determines the rank so because of that there is a huge difference that happens from je to be said not even coming to the complexity mm-hmm. complexity also changes and especially because english and logical reasoning are and more weightage is given to maths right and another thing that was there was more j the physics standard is has uh, as of now has become much lower than what it was and what it should be mm-hmm. and uh, maths has become very tough like very. a much higher standard than uh, it's becoming more and more complex as the years go go on but that is not necessarily the fact for other entrance exams also some other entrance exams the maths is not getting tougher it remains the mm-hmm. same right so if one only focuses on the subject that is tougher mm-hmm. then afterwards for the later entrance exams suppose let's say physics happens to be a little more tougher and maths happens to be a little easier mm-hmm. like uh, my state entrance exam which is karnataka cet i mean i personally did not write it but my uh, friend told me that the physics Mm-hmm. happen to be way way harder than even je oh, okay. which never happens that is because so the complexity of each subject differs from entrance uh, differs between entrance exams so equal weightage has to be given to all of them so one depending for je it would be inclined to put more effort in maths but that is right. not necessarily the case for other exams so, oh, i mean other okay. entrance exams right. very and, yeah so uh-huh. as it goes on it changes a little bit <laughs> i would say very detailed analysis actually and uh, at student level rarely you know uh, at times a student put so much head into this thing that how uh, these exams are different but i would say that is a great analysis for sure very nice yeah. so uh, you talked about english logical reasoning part arjun how mm. how is their preparation like to be handled english and logical reasoning is a thing where um, most students who prepare for entrance exams because of course they they will be preparing for je and state entrance exams primarily then only other you know uh, private uh, entrance exams and all they'll prepare for it later like lesser mm-hmm. priority they come so in those exams what are given the top priority logical reasoning and english they are not there so mm-hmm. students only tend to learn it only after they have to they are forced to take uh, you know entrances uh, i mean you know like bitsat and vit triple e manipal whatever mm-hmm. so in these entrance exams uh, and manipal and vit uh, at least by my experience the logical reasoning in english it has been we it has been much easier than how it is in bitsat okay so like for bitsat logical reasoning in english together come for 30 i mean 30 questions mm-hmm. out of 130 questions mm-hmm. 130 right. 130 yeah. questions yeah mm-hmm. so uh because, and so the the thing is that those 30 questions each are three marks so mm-hmm. 30 becomes 90 marks just from the two sections logical reasoning in english and those two subjects unlike physics chemistry maths 
don't need that much preparation to throw two years and all right like you can spend while preparing for bitset let's say you spend a month every day just doing a uh, logical reasoning and english questions it will mm-hmm. help at least for me my, like my father told me to try logical reasoning in english papers every day okay. just even if i don't take uh, pcm and i mm-hmm. just study mm-hmm. every day like from our class the i got like 30 tests so from every uh, almost all of them i just took only the logical reasoning and english okay i didn't take physics chemistry maths from all of them but logical reasoning in english every single day every night and the thing is logical reasoning in english these two parts get over very fast right very right. start let's say 30 questions you won't uh, on an average barely one minute each question like for some question may take 2 minutes but for some question you can take half a minute also right so within half an hour uh, it is possible to score a lot let's say you uh, out of 30 questions only 25 questions are scored right still 75 marks just from that nice so which is comparable to how much you would realistically score in physics and chemistry but it gets over way faster very nice so because the logical reasoning in english can sometimes be the tipping points to uh, it can determine the mark how much ever it is definitely that's very nice great so uh, arjun again same way very detailed explanation of this part and we would also like to know so you you took our test series right and uh, mm. how how was your experience with the series how could it help you in your bedside preparation um mars class space the test series that i took again i took the test series with uh, the 30 test series one Mm-hmm. and uh, again as you told us when we got itself the first 20 tests were of lesser complexity and the last 10 tests were of higher complexity mm-hmm. which was clo- uh, somewhat closer to the amount of complexity that bits had had so what I, how it helped me was because it had a lot of tests like that mm-hmm. and as i said i took a logical reasoning in english just like capsules for right. almost every test like out of 30 i have taken like 20 to 25 tests just logical reasoning great so because it enabled me to get an idea on variety of questions that are possible mm-hmm. and then i yeah uh, the last 10 i think i took like eight or nine tests mm-hmm. like full tests okay. physics chemistry maths logically seen in english full test and then i got to see what kind of questions Uh, came like from what concepts they came and what the actual solution was and all that kind of stuff i could see a detailed analysis of what uh, concepts i had to learn and what i did not have to you know mm-hmm. put too much focus into more than i already have and uh, yeah and my time management all that sort of stuff and most importantly negative marking because mm-hmm. ne- uh, with that and again je also has like negative marking so the controlling the negative marking also plays a huge role because in 130 questions you might be motivated to attempt more right but it again has a negative mark and this the negative marking with that is harsher than je because it's 3 and minus 1 instead of 4 right. and minus 1 right so because that master class space uh, helped me get an idea on that like and master class i only got it after my bitsat first attempt okay before the first attempt i had another uh, mm-hmm. not 30 series i had 10 mm-hmm. which i had taken like eight or something okay and uh, after the first session i took uh, master class so that i can get a wide range of questions to for me to try and understand great great so that way it was very helpful that's very nice to know so uh, finally arjun after this lot of prep journey and uh, i would say very tiring uh, counseling process also for you so you got some good time so like so these 40 45 days how you get to spend them 
I I just tried to I mean I didn't get to spend the complete forty to forty five days. I went I I traveled to some places and I went out played. Uh, I mean met some of my friends because mm-hmm. many of them were were not preparing for Bitsar later. So like the whole time is preparing for Bitsar. I didn't get to you know meet and go out and stuff like that. Right. So went out uh, interacted with friends and all more and. Uh, I actually had a surgery, so I couldn't. I mean, I lost like around fifteen twenty days in the middle. So, but yeah, most of it was better. Okay, hoping everything is fine now. Yeah, yeah, now it's fine now. It, it was a small surgery, so. Yeah. Okay, great, great, great. So, thanks a lot, Arjun, for sharing this detailed information. I would say, yeah. those who would be watching it, they would. They won't have to do their own analysis because you have presented yeah. pretty much. Uh, everything in a very detailed nicely explained manner thanks a lot for sharing this and we we wish you all the best for your all future endeavors thanks a lot okay great